<laughs> so let's okay. So let me do this, and it's I'll I'll fix it in post. Yeah, you got to do the jump intro. Right in, <laughs> and uh, we didn't even introduce you guys. I once again getting that, assuming everybody knows what we're talking about. You guys don't live in my brain, so. Um, so I just hit record earlier on this conversation because it was going off the rails fast in a really good way. And I wanted to catch the train wreck. You know, you got to hit record. So um, so we jumped right into it. I didn't get a chance to introduce everybody. I'll put this in the beginning um, when I'm doing the editing. But of course, I am your co-host, Pink. We've got Dave Lauer. And then we've got some of our production team joining us that is always in the peanut gallery. So always behind the scenes, but not ever uh, where you guys can see or hear and um they're, they're great guys so we just decided to jump on today and um see how it goes so let us know in the comments if you like this really crazy um offbeat episode and maybe we'll try to do some more where we just kind of shoot the breeze behind the scenes uh but we've got dave tomar who is um you probably know him better as Irvin ed and then we've got the real dmt body surf dan who does our video editing and and um our lyricist uh, extraordinaire our they poet call laureate. Called. Yes, call. exactly. So all <laughs> of the GameStop saga, that's where a lot of us know and love him from. So, um, so yeah, this is, this is our production team and sorry, Scott, the first one Scott's missed in a while. Uh, we decide to put everybody up on stage. So it's nothing personal. Scott, so we'll pissed. catch you next time. <laughs> sorry. Uh, Scott is our every man. Next, next episode will literally just be Scott in front of the camera by himself for 45 minutes. <laughs> Explaining short selling. <laughs> okay, and, pro and probably rhapsodizing Rush. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. He really loves He'll Rush. Definitely get him belting out some Rush tunes. I can't believe he's, he's, he's not oh, Canadian. Shocking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's from Pittsburgh. It's like practically it's, the same thing. It's it's, it's so Canada. Funny. It's Canada, Pennsylvania. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as opposed to like Pennsylvania, which is a different part of Pennsylvania. That was my yeah. favorite character on Orange is the New Black. She was a great one. She was oh, crazy. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. All right, this episode right. is a little bit of everything, so stay <laughs> Exactly. Uh, about regulations at this point is that um, if you haven't been explicitly told that you can't do it, yeah. then it's then it's not necessarily illegal. And and even if you have been explicitly told that you can't do it, but they don't have the enforcement mechanisms to stop you from doing it, then yeah, it's a pretty big gray area whether something is illegal yeah. or not. That's then right. it becomes like, oh, we'll pay the fine later. If anything, it'll be a small slap. Yeah, but even from cost of doing business perspective, it's hard to enforce, right? Because if it's if it's not like crystal clear that it's illegal, like to the letter of the law, your lawyers, if you're a big company, are going to be, you know, way better resourced than the regulators or the enforcers. And it's going to be really hard to enforce the law when it's ambiguous or, you know, not explicitly illegal. That uh, that could describe so many degrees of regulation that it's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. It's basically how we have our current financial system is because of that exact. So this is called the shareholder vote exchange. Yeah. And I were just kind of doing a let's talk markets off the rails here. Uh <laughs> and thought I'd hit record. Maybe I'll do well, it. Well, Disney later. makes sense for it. I assume the greatest amount of lawlessness resides in Florida. I don't it's know. It's quickly becoming <laughs> that way if yeah. not already. Why Grand yeah. Theft Auto 6 is in Florida. Have you guys seen the yeah. Oh my so god. The, the headline the headline is, you know, Florida man buys 500,000 votes. <laughs> no no i you know i hate to i hate i think that's so good but it's actually nelson nelson peltz's fund it's a hedge fund that's not an activist hedge fund <laughs> and i'm going to assume they're actually from new york although that's a simpsons character yeah, but, that's not yeah, nelson movie. nelson peltz is fun to say yeah, <laughs> yeah they're real? based in new york so yeah, he's non-executive gonna... chairman of Wendy's, Cisco, and the Madison Square Garden. <laughs> How can we disarm them by sounding like a candy company? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so there's this huge proxy battle taking place right now, and there are websites, 
the future of Disney.com, restore the magic.com. Those, those are the hedge funds websites that are trying um, to buy the votes. These are the guys trying to purchase the votes. They're trying to buy the votes. And on this new, this new website called the shareholder vote exchange, they have bid 20 cents a vote. So they, someone has bid, some, one of these hedge funds has bid $100,000 for 500,000 shares worth of votes. So if you talk to the shareholders vote exchange, they're going to tell you, well, look, you know, retail doesn't vote and they're right. And they're going to, and they're going to say, since retail doesn't vote, there's this thing just sitting out here worth money and retail should be able to realize some money from it, right? The retail will lend its shares out. Yeah, willingly. it's like another version of stock lending almost. Right? I mean, it is. you're making free money off of your savings it's account. Like, it's almost. like a study so just to be vote. clear, if I'm a retail uh, investor, I have I have a single vote, uh, and they purchase this per share. Uh, they, per share, they purchase this block. I personally get twenty cents per share. Per share. Okay. It's not nothing. All right. No, it's so you know. Yeah, no. For some, <laughs> I mean, it would be for me anyway. technically, but. <laughs> I, I think mean, I have a fractional share with Disney like sitting in some account that I got right? for free somewhere. So for me, it'd be well, a you know, I'm I'm taking my kid to Disney for the first time in three weeks, and it feels like I paid an investment, <laughs> sort of yeah. sum for it. So, it feels like you, you know, might have paid for a small, yeah. uh, community college. <laughs> yeah, I'm stealing a mascot head based on what I paid. We're gonna see like a Russian company <laughs> pop up. Like, oh, if you were you're gonna be the next Florida man. Yeah. <laughs> votes in this next American presidential election. Look, Dave, you can only steal a mascot head if you do some bath salts ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, I'll disarm them by wearing nothing when I approach. <laughs> I think that's telltale sign. <laughs> At that point, they'll just give me the head. <laughs> please, sir, please, leave. Please, <laughs> Goofy, whatever you want. Please, just go. <laughs> well, it's a never-ending Wild West in Florida, it sounds like. Mm. So get ready. Yeah, so, I, I mean, look, if, if, if retail... By buying will... a vote, don't you change the definition of what vote means? And, you know oh, I mean? and... And what about the company? Can the company pay and buy their own votes for its own votes? How twenty cents on a share? Is this not legal? Done, where like, does he draw the lines? Like, where yeah, it's to possibly nuts. commit a felony. You From know, a government so, but, perspective, it's totally insane, right? Like now, a company is incentivized to like use its treasury to secure enough votes to to. Uh, pass a new executive comp package. Do we um do we know where this do we know where this practice emerged and how long it's been? Um, I, I don't even want to say illegal or, or legal, but not not an undefined but allowed process. So I, you know, I, I, he told me I, I spoke like I said I spoke with the CEO. Maybe we're going to have him on the program um, in the near future, and we can ask. All, all of these questions and more. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we but, can bring proximity on and be like, so what do you think about that yeah, proximity? That's right. Yeah, for sure. Surprise, they'll be in the background and yeah. just has them sitting backstage and be like, Bing! surprise. Yeah, so they're <laughs> saying that like hypothetically you can get a vote premium of two and a half percent. That so, you know, like two and a half percent of the value of your holdings is its voting power. Um, and they've had over 200,000 votes traded on the platform as of the end of last year. So who knows what's happened since then, but yeah, it's been around for, I think a year or so. Um, and they lead auctions. So then it gets even more twisted. So they, so have, clearly they have purchased votes for any number of, uh, company shareholder meetings and, and possibly impacted policy and leadership structure for these companies. Yeah. I'm just and wondering we, and we and and to what degree do we ever know about it? You know, uh, I mean, it seems like a pretty invisible sort of arrangement. I wonder how they get like marketing out, like to their like, hey, we're targeting this company now. How do we, you know, like Disney? Let's, you know, like what are they? Well, it's like they've said, right? Like, they've got a website. It's like help us restore the magic of Disney by taking retailers out of the mix, retail voters out of the mix. I mean, you guys it's don't know uh, what you're doing. 
Yeah. Yeah. Every time you're buying votes, you've already crossed the line of completely undermining democracy, (laughs) democratic process. But like, call it a vote if you bought it. Right. Here's here's another Star Wars franchise. Shut up. (laughs) Exactly. Here's what the the Wall Street Journal is like: the ethics of buying shareholder votes is are debated. (laughs) Yeah. The Wall Street Journal (laughs) debate the ethics of anything, as we all know. (laughs) Wait until our next podcast. <laughs> well, absolutely. You know, with uh, with shareholder verified communities, we kind of run up against. We we kind of face that head on. You know, it's like that's that's part of everything that we're talking about here. Is something that we're trying to fix with the platform, and it's why I, I believe so much in what we're doing, and and that it has a place in the scheme of all this because these are the guys running the show. Who has the money to buy votes? Who has the interest to buy? you know, votes t- to sway a corporate election in their favor. It's not, it's not the retail investor. That's just, it's crazy, you know, and well, money talks, money talks. Yeah. It's by its very nature. It's, just... it's, uh, it's eerily similar to the topic that I think that we plan to discuss next week about um, unclaimed property uh, and, uh, <laughs> and proxy voting and, you know, there, there is this, you know. So we, you know, without getting too deep into this idea of of unclaimed property. Uh, so if you don't sign into your investment account for a year, in some context, the government has a right to claim it, and they give you a, an amount of time to reclaim it. But and and it's the same logic uh, as here are our votes going unused by retail investors. Instead of getting them to use those votes, we're just going to go ahead and take them uh and and this this unclaimed property thing has this sort of same uh the same imperative which is well here's here here are resources that we could put back into uh the economy with value so if you're not going to do anything with i mean we know it's yours but if you're not going to do anything with it yoink and and, um, unconstitutional by its very definition because we're protected against unreasonable searches and seizures and that it's is em- it's eminent domain. <laughs> yeah, it really right is. Up here, it, it's to- that's totally unconstitutional, you know. And it should it should be that what somebody should be able to die with their shares and they pass right on to you know what I mean? Like well, they you, can. That's what that's what happens. The 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 thing with with um you know what I mean? Like when in your final years is, of life, like in your nineties, we are not checking help. your account every day every we year. We can help you know? this. This is a problem where if something is forgotten that's a problem right like maybe the 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 question is not about inheritance of shares the question is about you forgot you had those shares and your heirs forgot you had those shares so based on that i went on the you know the a couple of states websites and did some searching i found that i have a two dollar paypal balance in massachusetts so money money bonanza Uh, and I found that my namesake, my great grandfather, uh, my uh, grandfather, and my dad all have unclaimed property in Pennsylvania. And now and my dad's starting the process allow, of getting most that. Most states right? will allow for your legal heir to claim that in case, you know, if you can prove, um, if you know, you can pr- provide a will uh, for a deceased relative anyway, yeah. um, then just for anybody listening, this programs run by state treasuries you just look up your state and then unclaimed property you can search your name i found i did like dave and and looked up a couple of states and i found my i guess name neighbor has like a six figure check outstanding from from oil and gas and i was like well are we related like you (laughs) Mm. (laughs) try and claim it you never know (laughs) yeah but it's it's a lot of like um forgotten 401ks and stuff yeah. isn't it? like people right. leave a, a job and forget that they even had so it's, it it's, it's an important subject in two ways one so that people are aware that they have to stay active so that they can make sure that property never ends up unclaimed and that they document things appropriately for their heirs and and such and and two that you might have property and you should go check it out you might find two dollars from paypal that are that's yours and why is massachusetts holding on to that any Massachusetts I just feel like a year, like the, the time scale of a year is way too short. That's to step totally. In and take Dan, that is exactly was my takeaway. Was that seems unreasonable? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's that's like crazy. Crazy. 
and like and I'm states, sure that a bunch has slipped through the cracks, you know. Yeah, like, states can allow for longer because I noticed some, like particularly one state I was looking up, they had cases back to like 2008 that you could claim. Like it was, you know, it, it it's it's up to the state. I think the state treasury how they uh, that timeline works. I did it about a decade ago, and I I mean I got it like a couple hundred bucks from. It was actually from like electric uh, or utilities that I got my deposit back, but didn't ever get the check. Like that yep. was the most of yeah. it was something that I forgot that I my got. My like PayPal computer. balance is twenty years old. It's still there waiting for me. Those two. Oh, that's... You should charge them interest. Twenty yeah, years I... of interest on two dollars is like eight dollars. It'd be like three bucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see the Futurama episode where Fry's like a multi-billionaire because he had like three dollars in his account. Yeah, no, but I'm in Canada, man. Three U.S. dollars. That's you can buy a house here for yeah. Us. yeah. Hey. All because you had changed from purchasing a Backstreet Boys CD all those years ago. All right. It was a different time. Different Forgive him. Man. Hey, I just found a, a perfectly still a shrink wrap jagged little pill CD in my stuff, Alanis Morissette. So if there's a market for that, let me know. Um, <laughs> it might even be worth the five dollar sticker that's on it. But should I, all right? So so now let's let's talk about that. Should I? How horrified should I be that my daughter wants to have a themed party and the theme she wants to be Taylor Swift? Uh -oh. Well, How okay, you know. It, it depends I, on the age. If she's 30, I'd be worried. No. But like, yeah. you know, if she's she's a, she's a tween. I yeah. have nothing I have nothing yeah. bad to say about Taylor Swift. I don't it's not the music is not for me. She was okay, but she seems like a lovely person. She does seem like a lovely person. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and also commands a huge slice of this economy. Yeah. Sure. This Boy, is, yeah. my daughter it's love like a her. Great, like, common yeah. denominator m music is how I look at it. Like, if you really, you know what I mean? Like, if you're, like, she doesn't lean right, she doesn't lean left. She's like, I love songs. You know what I mean? It's like, if you don't want, you know, you won't really want any direction, sure. That's I think I as, as a mother who has uh, an older teenage daughter now, but she went through a Taylor Swift phase for sure that never really ended. I, I looked at it as, you know, there's a lot worse, um, a lot worse. even female performers that oh, she absolutely. could be uh, looking up to and hoping to emulate. And the music's innocent. It's, you know, it's pretty. Okay. It's, so it's so now the next, the next question is, the next question is, um, as, as Dave well understands, I am completely and totally tone deaf. Um, and <laughs> my daughter has been learning to play guitar and, uh, she's awesome and is really good. And she wants to do a duet with me with the Taylor Swift song. Oh, mm. do it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm trying damned everything. Do it's it. A, cool. It's a funny song for me to be singing for sure. What, like, what song oh, you know, is it? What song? Right? I gotta know. Wildest dreams. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's gonna go great. It's gonna go great, Dave. I think in order to pull it off, you need to uh, get the Ed Sheeran Tiger chest tattoo. Uh, otherwise, uh, I just don't think you're gonna fit the part. I'm yeah, have to do a costume change. Yeah, yeah, just you know, you just you just need pullaways, you know. If you need, if you need auto tune, if you need me to auto tune your voice, Dave, you know, send me, send it over to me. I got you. Yeah. yeah no, oh, you know that's not a bad idea. I want to. I want to hear him sound like Cher. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cher was like the first. Yeah. Yeah. First that's, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad about Taylor Swift, but don't get me started on on Believe by Cher. Oh, God. <laughs> that song is an abomination. Yeah. <laughs> no, no yeah, hate for Taylor Swift. She no, yeah, we, we keep no things compromise. positive here, though, so I won't get deep on that. <laughs> the best person to use auto tune was honestly T Pain. I really like that bartender song. That he, made. Bartender. He, he was the first person to like make it his trademark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> Dude, when he did that Aussie cover, I was like, he has a voice. Like he's not just a computer. Yeah, you know, like sing. he can actually sing. Like yeah. Yeah, I think um, I, I think he won he won one season of that uh, show where you're like the masked singer, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he really did because the dude can sing. For real, He's, you didn't know it because he was robotic for all those years. Yeah, and he, <laughs> and he made plenty of bags off his country, like pinning a bunch of country music and selling it to a bunch of racist people, and going home <laughs> laughing all the way to the bank. So, so good for him. I was just looking up Reddit because yesterday, like speaking of an account that I'm glad I logged into, I got I got in on the um Yeah, how's how's Reddit do it to where is it at today? Uh Boy, well, it's going back yeah, down today. No. 
It IPO'd at 34. I missed right. the whole I missed the whole Reddit thing. Man, I was just over there buying got, GameStop. I'm seeing a it. high of it, it hit a high of 74 spot eight. Oh wow. Yesterday. I'm not throwing up a in my Yeah. And it is now down to 58 spot eight. Mm. So it is going all over the place. Yeah. Um, yeah that, you know, yesterday it, that's double the IPO or more. Yeah, they're almost triple. And yeah, oh no, sorry, double the IP. Yep, it doubled. Um, and then uh, I think H Hindenburg came out, a short seller came out uh, and said, we think it's going to drop 50%. And so <laughs> it promptly dropped 10%. <laughs> well, now that options are like at play, that makes it a lot more volatile too. So, like, we're going to see a lot more of the. You know, W Wall Street Bets has their hands on it now, so that's going to be interesting to watch because that's they were all just foaming at the mouth to short the crap out of it. So, like the dog veteran I mean, meme with like short ladder, just short ladder attack. I saw, I Dark saw pool. um a a bull thesis on on Reddit about um of course probably on Wall Street Bets about arguing that Reddit's an AI company, and it was like no, I mean you know the AI training model is definitely it's probably its biggest value prop but those are going to be some really messed up bots <laughs> <laughs> did you guys see well that, i think uh, that's the idea is for them to feeling the ai robot that's like you know has opinions and thinks and feels and uh has like facial expressions and stuff what's her name sophie ai bot uh, maybe uh my girl showed it to me yesterday um Sorry. Oh, it was not Hindenburg. It was Hedgeye named Hedgeye. Reddit as a short selling idea. I don't think very much of Hedgeye, so that doesn't surprise me. Um, I mean, they're just echoing what all of the. But there's a big, uh, you know, according to this, uh, two over 2 million shares are on loan, which is 7% of the company's oh, thank you. free float. Man, I just I don't know. I just it doesn't feel authentic. I get I start getting all conspiratorial. My, my GM I don't know, Reddit comes like out they're... and I'm like, wait, what are they really? Well, I mean, wasn't that the whole point of involving um Redditors to begin with was to help inflate that number? For yeah. sure. I mean, I mean you know, so what so you know, Kate, it's it's it worked, you know. Yeah, real well, yeah. Um and uh well, you know, Huffman made like a billion dollars. Yeah, like a bill, so like a bill, like literally like a billion dollars. And Sam Altman owns nine percent of the company. So it's nine percent an AI company. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which but I mean, like it's, it's not a totally one invalid big... argument. That's like that. That is its biggest value prop is one hundred percent. Yeah, to to train it, and they've been doing it since. I mean, like we've had just well, like I... the investment community has been complaining about the Chat GPT bots since twenty twenty one for years now. So. It's already happening. Might as well like make some money off of it. I mean, you know, pe yeah, people were they, these companies were were taking Reddit's data for free for the longest time. Reddit stepped in and said, "No, you're gonna have to pay." People didn't like that on Reddit, but to be fair, like it's a it, maybe there was a better middle ground for third party apps, right? Because that that was a big problem when they stopped third party apps. But you know, that data is extremely valuable but, but right. what? so this becomes one giant like sieve of data into ai engines and you think like redditors are really going to be down for that is that what they want to be well it already feels very dead internet ish you know yeah. on reddit was kind of like the last bastion of the main social media yeah. platform is it going to be the next myspace do the next MySpace, where mean, major ma major investment in it is what ultimately destroys it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you IPO when you're as far if you're a C-suite exec, don't you IPO when you're when you're kind of ready to get out? Like that's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and and I mean that doesn't spell the end of the company, but it's anybody that no, wants but to it does. Dig, it, it, you yeah. know, when Dig, all of that happened in 2016, like, it's it's already so far from what it originally was. I think it's turned off a lot of people. We They took our awards. You know, that was a, a really a way to to 
boost content organically. Right. Fortunately, fortunately for them, though, the, um, the data is already there, you know, that valuable data, you know, that they are there to farm for AI is um, years of population. Um, yeah. waiting, waiting right, to be right. used. So uh, they don't need you to be engaged anymore for that to yeah. be valuable, right? You know, in that um, that AI thing that I mentioned, which by the way, I put the link up in the chat here, is uh, um, Sky News Australia was interviewing a free thinking AI bot. Um, the AI bot, well, they, they start mentioning how uh, artificial intelligence is increasing and it's uh, it's like about 155 IQ right now, like um, the intel like the equivalent of a very, very smart human um, and in a couple of years, you know, it's going to double and double and double till eventually, you know, maybe two or three years from now, it'll be 300,000 times smarter than the average human. Um, which yeah, is pretty crazy mean, like, if you think about. Computers are already that, you know, even more, you know. Well, if a in, computer is 300,000 times smarter than See, a human, you could yeah, give it a drop of blood. That's and the it can thing. Figure like, out immortality. These are, these are measured on certain tasks, right? And And it's. I, I find this stuff to be very deceptive because it just because they are good at certain things, it, it, it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with a, a valid comparison to a human because humans are good at certain things. And we have, you know, sort of a, a consciousness that has not been replicated with machines. And we have no idea how to replicate it. We have no Correct. idea why it even exists, really. I mean, lots of interesting philosophy and theories. But when it comes down to it, that's why we can't recreate them on a computer. And, you know, I, I don't know. I have no worries about this because I think computers are great at certain things. And these are going to be the best possible tools to make humans, you know, even better, hopefully in a good way. Maybe not, but you know, like hopefully we're headed towards a future in which Depends we're also supplemented right? and augmented by AI, and it leads to more leisure time for most people. And we, you know, we people can be creative and artistic and 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 do other things. And you know, I don't know. Now we're getting into Star Trek, but that's the future. <laughs> well, more like, Black <laughs> more like Black Mirror. I feel like. I'd like. I mean, if you look at what they're doing with AI in China, that's that's really scary. You know what I mean? Like how they got the cameras watching everybody's eyes, and you know what I mean? Like for it's giving people this credit score basically assigned by some autonomous AI. That's like that's straight up Black Mirror crap. Right? I agree, and that's why. And Dan, I think you were away. I think you were in Thailand when we recorded the episode um, with Chris Giancarlo about the digital dollar and CBDCs. But that was like the theme of it was China is creating a CBDC. And so right. and they're exporting that to other countries and getting them to adopt it. And so the question is, do you want a state like that to control currency and money versus- Do you want spyware in your currency? Right, versus <laughs> a US driven CBDC, which can be built with protections for privacy and you know, uh, and and protections against surveillance, and 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 you know, exported in the name of freedom. I mean, you know, in so much the, as uh, the best the, the best intent of the U.S. dollar, not oh, not man. the real. I mean, you know, not always the real impact of U.S. brand capitalism, but sure. for it to reflect the best intent of the U.S. dollar, which is free market capitalism. Right, and I, I know Dan, fine. you're a big a CBDC great skeptic. Evil. Right, I, I feel know like it's it. justifying a great evil by pointing at a a greater evil is what I feel like. It's like, look, that evil is so great, we might as well, you know, let in this crazy, terrible emperor. You know what I mean? Like CBDC, regardless. No, no. Well, the point is, well, the point is, uh, you know, our our crazy, terrible, our crazy, terrible emperor already exists, um, and China represents the possibility of making it worse. So <laughs> that's, well, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, who do you, who do you, who do you want to replace that, that, uh, that global standard, back you know, the episode that we had with Byron, where we were talking about, you know, what, like it, there's either this dark road of CBDCs that, which is like the Armageddon, the apocalypse to fucking crypto. And you know what I mean? Like the real freedom of currency, if you think about it, where they, if everything is, if somebody somewhere can push a button and shut off your entire life for whatever reason, you know what I mean? then that's not democracy. That's not a free society. That's totally, that's a total dystopia, regardless, especially when we have the option of, of um, stable coins, or, or you know what I mean? Like something so much better um, than yeah, CBDs. Stable coins need to be regulated if we're going to go down that path. 
Well, well absolutely. Um, but it's just such a better option than a CBDC, which gives somebody somewhere. And if you look back on human history, whenever you give anyone total control, it never right. ends up. So what about if you combine the kind of technology Byron was talking about in Loopring, which is zero knowledge proofs with a CBDC. Well, so it yeah. can't have, someone can't have that kind of control. That's what Chris, that's the idea that Chris was was advancing, that the US can stand for freedom and, lib and economic liberty by okay. designing a CBDC that cannot be surveilled and cannot be controlled. I want Byron on the team and then I'd be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know what it is? I just don't trust these guys anymore. Like, I, yeah, it's like, I don't blame you. We've been lied you. to just constantly, you know what I mean? I'm not like going to go into like conspiracies and all that shit, but if you've been paying attention, you know, uh, we've been lied to a lot, you know, and I just don't really have that much trust for institutions or three letter agencies at this point. You know, it's like I just don't trust them to do the right thing with a CBDC. Yeah. I, uh, I only find it interesting that you distinguish at this point. I do feel that's sort of the nature of life in america by design uh you know it's 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 not to trust them it's the it's it's to hope that we can establish mechanisms that work and to establish control over them to the extent that we can you know uh so and just right. to clarify for anybody watching uh central bank digital currency is what cbdc stands for yeah uh, and check so. out our episode with chris giancarlo if you want to learn right. all about them all right, let's let's switch gears. Let's talk about your favorite stock and mine. <laughs> GameStop. GameStop. Full earnings, earnings. <laughs> Full profitability and the price. GameStop is profitable. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. As, GameStop totally is normal stock behavior. Now you know? what? Net income was announced yesterday. Net income was six point seven million dollars for fiscal year twenty twenty three. Compared to a net loss of three hundred and thirteen point one million dollars for fiscal year twenty twenty two, I see that big turnaround. I'll give that big improvement. And how much of that was based on video game sales? I mean, I bought a lot. I think I'm holding the company up at this point, Dave. Like, I've bought a lot. Yeah, and I got a lot of these these crypto cards over here too. I didn't get any crypto on them, but you know, I got some cool cards. Got Elon Musk with a flamethrower on Mars. That's a cool one. <laughs> no way. Show us that one. I want to see that Hang one. On, let me see. Hang on. I'll go I want to see that. <laughs> That's the first good Elon Musk thing I've heard in a long time. Yeah. Hang on. Let me find it for you. In yeah, my go go blow go. up some other planet. <laughs> hey, let me get it not blared background. All right. All right. Uh, That's get good. The freaking like blared background. Let me take the blur in a cyber truck. He looks like a garbage pail kid. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> I need to hold that. Uh, I got to take on my, my background blur. There we go. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> That's rad. Man, that those is, are is that, is, Why RC, I does that mean it's a rookie card? Is that like Elon's first? Yeah. Uh, I got like Satoshi Nakamoto and stuff in here. I don't really like, you know, I used what to like are these? Pokemon. Yeah, what are these? I need these, these are cards. The GameStop, these are the, the, the currency cards that they sell at GameStop. Um, What are they called? Uh. Oh, <laughs> um, oh, the card smith, they're like currency. I don't know if you look to look up card smith. Can I get them shipping or Canada or do I have to it's... send them to my U.S. shipping depot? Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably get them shipped to Canada. Yeah, David, uh, David don't, my shipping depot. don't get them addicted to another line of cards because I got I've got boxes of baseball cards. <laughs> you know, rightfully so, they just won't ship them to Canada. Baseball, <laughs> baseball cards stay here in America, uh, and so don't don't get them to start ordering your uh, GameStop Magic the Gathering stuff to my house. <laughs> <laughs> the, these Magic the Gathering cards, when you buy them, you have a chance of getting actual crypto. So there's people who've gotten like you know one Ethereum and one. One Bitcoin from these cards and they buy them. Yeah, there's there like a, a, you know, like you get like the rare holographic Pokemon card. Well, in this case, the rare card is actual cryptocurrency, <laughs> you know, and a lot of it. So, you know, people are, uh, it's like an incentive to buy them. I can see that. I haven't gotten any crypto yet, but I've gotten a couple of Elon Musk flamethrower cards. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's pretty dope. And I got a Satoshi Nakamoto or Satoshi Nakamoto, however the hell you say it. I got to agree. That's pretty dope. Yeah, right. That's different. I, I'm, I'm just learning about this, and I think that's really cool. I, I yeah. do. Yeah. So, 
those went nuts. Like those are so still now my hotcakes. There's they no sold more, out like ten times at GameStop. There's no more mystery as to why GameStop is profitable now. Yep, it's, it's the all trading about cards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. cards. Trading cards. We went nuts buying these trading cards, man. Uh, collectibles these have gone through the roof too. since COVID. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, so GameStop's profitable, and speaking of short selling, um, we got to talk about this uh, Palantir CEO. Yes, Alex Carp. Now, listen, I am not a Palantir fan. Let's let's get that out of the way. I believe that there are companies out there that are deeply unethical in terms of what they are willing to do with people's data, and this is one of them. But so no that endorsement aside, here. No endorsement. AI ethics aside, I like the cut of this guy's jib. <laughs> here's, here's what he said he said i uh, and he said this on cnbc this is great i love burning the short sellers almost nothing makes a human happier than taking the lines of cocaine away from these short sellers <laughs> who are going short on a truly great american economy not just ours but just love pulling down great american companies so they can pay for their coke the best thing that would happen to them is we'll lead their Coke dealers to their homes after they can't pay their bills. <laughs> well, I, said, my, they're well said. Like my only is, my only question well. is, uh, what's a jib? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my one takeaway. I don't know. I always thought it was like a jar or something. Like, I was, like, like, oh, he's got like a Batman jar or something. <laughs> like, exactly. He did not tap that- dance around that. That's kind of yeah, like you said that kind of rings uh, that sentiment rings true to all of us huh? maybe like a bib like it's like yeah, a maybe. triangular shaped bib you know what i mean so it only catches spaghetti that falls directly it's out like of your yeah, I, paper Dan, that your kids make Dan, make sure you get the definition up here in post <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> we define our terms here uh yeah that's a that's some subtle messaging right there on short selling <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, yeah, tell us, tell us what you really think. Tell us more. <laughs> so the the jib, uh, this in the 17th century, the shape of the jib sail often identified a vessel's nationality, oh, and yeah. hence identified whether it was hostile or friendly. So to like mm. the cut of someone's jib is their general appearance or personality is generally friendly and not hostile. So now that you say that, I think I knew it from listening to hours and hours and hours of the Pirate History podcast, which I very much recommend <laughs> everybody listen yeah, to. Yeah, I, I am going to say that if you listen to a pirate podcast and you did not come away with a definition <laughs> for jib, then you probably should start from the beginning and do the whole yeah, thing yeah. over again. You know, <laughs> this pirate game called Atlas, and I was told I had a great pirate voice. I would be the guy like singing the sea shanties on the ship when we were going to like... I see that, Dan. I, mean, I see you with a peg leg. Dan, and anyone who looks, looks at you and doesn't think pirate just doesn't know what one looks like. That's fair. I, you know, I mean, he's... All right, so I, I get... I get where he's coming from, but his fixation on Coke is he's, interesting, right? There's a really strong, there's a really strong anti-cocaine agenda to his message, it you is. know? Yeah. You guys yeah. remember it's on Reddit really, when, those, when that guy sent right. the drone up to Citadel and they caught the footage of the guy sniffing Coke? And it, like, I mean, look, there's, there's no way this guy hasn't done lines with with short sellers, right? Like, that's say, how he knows. It sounds like his dealer didn't call oh. him back and he's pissed. He's like, these guys are <laughs> doing Coke and they've got all the Coke and nobody else yeah, can get it. Right. Yeah, the I just it's true. The uh the the repetition and the intensity of his messaging had like a an I'm on cocaine sort of energy. That's exactly like I want to take their cocaine so we can sniff it. You know, like (laughs) Yeah, that was the protest on the cocaine is a little. I believe he hates short selling. Um, but but uh, I'm not so convinced on the cocaine. Yeah. I, I think he, he sure hates short selling like and he likes the smell of cocaine. Yeah. Sure. Just the yeah. smell. Yeah, just the smell. He's not he doesn't like he does using it, but he just loves the smell of it. He loves how exactly. <laughs> like uh what like Fred Durst, right? He doesn't even smoke it, he just likes the way it smells. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> but right. that's you know, there's such a bro culture and there's like there's so much of that that we don't even know you know that, that goes on and all of these guys are buddies and all of this crime happens 
over coke in the bathroom you know what i mean a lot of the time like these these deals sometimes happen that way and it's crazy to think of just how how rampant the craziness is i I wasn't on wall street in the 80s but man the stories are something Uh, i know it makes me nostalgic for the reagan era that's what i you know when i that's my takeaway when i hear stuff like that cocaine yeah strong yeah and it's just listen mtv used to show music videos and um i'm not going to describe it as a simpler time but i am nostalgic for it (laughs) i remember when the uh, one of the executives of mtv went on mtv and blamed my generation for the fact that they no longer play music videos. Some girls like MTV used to play music videos. Now they just do like the real world and reality TV. And he was like, then it cut straight to like the executive. And he was like, it's your generation's fault. You guys decided to steal music. <laughs> you guys Kurt did that. Like, hey guys, Fuck it's Kurt you guys. Yeah. Was like now here's Your what fault. you get. The real world. Steal yeah. Music. I mean, you know, he's not wrong. He's just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> It cut to her wrong, she was like, <laughs> she was like horrified. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually I've seen that argument before about how uh, you know we can't we can't even make MTV profitable if we wanted to at this point, you know. Um, but that that shit doesn't fly with me. You know, in Canada they don't have MTV. It's called Much Music. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. What? <laughs> Nice marketing, eh? <laughs> Wait, what do we got a lot of? Music. We, much music. Right. All the tragically hip and bare naked ladies you can take. And then, no, that's two. That's, that you got to put the word two in front of it. At, at that <laughs> but you know what was great? All right, so I, I went to Vermont a couple of weeks ago for skiing. That's That, that explains this. I was going to ask. wondering, this sucks. Um, but... That aside, I we, we stopped in like a, a gas station before the border for some reason in Quebec. And yeah, dude, tragically hip on the radio. Oh yeah. Get across the border, go into a uh, an herbal shop in Vermont. I walk in, it's widespread panic. And I was like, <laughs> hey, I'm like, you know you're in Vermont when you switch from the hip to That's the, definitely the panic. I'm like Nice. It's the That's line. an official That's border right. crossing. All I can remember is them playing umbop over and over and over again. <laughs> just all day long was just umbop by Hanson. In in Canada, well, you know, it's because I assume I assume you were there in like 2009, and so if it's 10 years after the date, it's basically a new hit there. You know, it takes it takes a decade for a hit to travel north of the border from the U.S. You yeah. know, so like the 80s came to Canada in the mid 90s. You know, you know. I feel like uh, I, I watch some anime, right? And uh, in Japan, I feel like they go through music that we're going through. Like ten, they're like ten years behind our music. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, so, like, they're in like you know the well, maybe even twenty years. Like some of their hip hop is like dope. You're like, oh man, you're doing like dope old school hip hop. Like mm-hmm. saxophones, it's got jazzy elements. They're like, like old school. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're just getting outcast over exactly. here, and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. they don't even realize Polaroid pictures are about to come back in a big way. Yeah, it all comes yeah. full circle. <laughs> Thinking, sorry, Miss Jackson in Japanese. You know, all right, all right. We've, before we finish this um, incredibly illuminating, informative <laughs> podcast episode, I'd call it well. I'd call it well centered and and logically sequenced. Is what I'd call it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let us know if you like this format because we we do this a lot before the podcast, and we're always like, we should be recording, yeah. you know. And then so you'll let us know if we were wrong all of this time. Record. You're just like boom, yeah. we're recording. This is a good conversation. Yeah. Um, I think so, I think we should do it more. Yeah, there there are totally. a couple of things we wanted to talk about, just to give people uh, a heads up. Um, we're going to be uh, presenting to the, sh- the Irvin is going to be presenting to the Shareholder Services Association. We're doing a webinar um, next month. And the topic is how to engage your retail shareholders. And this without is without telling your votes. Without saying, <laughs> yeah, it's the opposite. How do we do the opposite of what's happening on the shareholder vote exchange? And it's something that companies really struggle with and really want to do. Um, and that's really what we as a company have set as our mission is to help facilitate a new level of engagement with retail and individual shareholders 
and to show companies that individual shareholders are the foundation of your shareholder base and that they're there for you. And if, but you need to engage them because if you don't engage them, they're going to sell their votes. So now, exactly. now we can even threaten them. <laughs> and then by the way, the same thing goes for uh, checking into your accounts. Uh, you know, with Urban, you can connect all of your accounts, uh, which means every time that you sign in here, you're technically signing in, which means that a year from now, uh, the state won't say you're in an, a in an active investor and we're just going to take uh, your uh, your money. Uh, so uh, that's another benefit of being an active shareholder is uh, if you uh, use, use our platform to engage, uh, then nobody can say that you're an absentee investor. Exactly. Right. Different Building democracy well, means a lot of the part around us. Irvin. Our new slogan. <laughs> we'll workshop that. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely that's gonna I mean that's I, you know, Dan and I are from the Reddit community and, and Dave. I mean Dave was there for, for most of the um, there, yeah. Yeah, there wrinkle room. and I mean so much advocacy and effort put in by the shareholders organically, We're just trying to educate each other and, you know, Hey, there's a proxy vote coming up. Be sure that you have, you know, that you've got your addresses updated. You've logged into your accounts and, and all of that stuff. We've been doing that for three years now. We're coming up on another proxy season for GameStop. And um, so that's kind of at the forefront of our minds now too. And it's, it's taking all of that that developed so grassroots and in such an organic way. And we're trying to elevate, we are elevating it to now presenting it to these associations and saying, look what we were able to do yeah. as a greater community. Look how many engaged shareholders are just waiting for your engagement, you know, contacting your IR and not getting a response. Sometimes GameStop, like <laughs> this kind of addresses all of those issues to really put the conversation in a safe, uh, verified well-moderated space that everybody can trust. So I'm really excited to hear that that conversation is going to such a high level, considering we were just like throwing memes at each other. What seems like a, a mere few years ago <laughs> about it all. So, so and also job. possibly earlier this morning, but you know, yes, it never <laughs> yeah. ends. It never ends. Memes and gifts all day long. <laughs> Thank you for pronouncing it correctly. No problem. If I hear Jeff, I, I, I'll pop see moms, I, I, You know, I, I'm the outlier here. I disagree with you all, but I'm not. I'm not going to get into it right now. I don't want to get emotional. Didn't the creator <laughs> say it was? He said it was Jeff. He said it was. All right. He this said it was Jeff. His opinion does not. Which is peanut butter. <laughs> That's a peanut butter. I do. I do yes. graphic design. Like that. I, I'm a graphic yes. artist. Yeah. Also, graphic stands artist. for graphics. It's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not how that's acronyms work, dream. man. <laughs> <laughs> that's just like your opinion, man. Mine and <laughs> mine and the creators. You know that was uh, what is it? It's uh, uh, Derrida who said that the uh, the writer's you know intention behind his work is meaningless. It is once it's out there, it's it's a part of the uh, the world and the culture in which it was created. As a, as a person who writes for a living, I'm inclined to disagree. <laughs> I mean, interpreted by people in English classes, and, uh, biblical verses in different states, you know what I mean? Like, You didn't think you were tuning into Let's Talk Markets and getting an, expo uh, an explanation of Derrida, did you? But look at what you got. <laughs> I, I saw it in the trailer. I knew it was coming. <laughs> So we got a lot of cool episodes coming up, though. So don't let this rambling, hilarious one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we're right. putting together the AMA. We're getting ready for round two. So we'll be announcing that soon yep. um, and gathering questions for that. And we're definitely going to focus focus in on more on naked short selling with uh, John Welburn. That was an awesome conversation. Mm -hmm. So uh, totally. we plan to continue that and look forward to it. You guys really liked that. I think that's our most watched video. So. Um, really excited to put together part two on that. Um, like, like Dave squared mentioned earlier, we have a conversation coming up on unclaimed property laws and all of that state of sheetment. A sheetment? Is that? You can't spell a sheetment without cheat. <laughs> I just used my best joke. Wow. I nice. set that up perfectly and didn't even know. You did. A Dave, just so you know. I am I am now on the board of directors because I used your uh, at the other company because I used your uh, your advice. Well, will this scale? 
gentlemen, is this but, scalable? But will it scale? Is this scalable? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now they're like, this guy's a pro. He's an expert. <laughs> 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 this guy's just you scalable. Go. You go. I got you back, Dan. <laughs> right? I forgot to show you. I missed us so much. I made us out of Legos. <laughs> my, my husband <laughs> got our little computer here. That is amazing. <laughs> so, always in my heart. Love it. All right. Well, I think we've uh, we've had enough fun here for now. Uh, well, we've and clearly covered all the important stuff. Party cast. I feel. I think this is our uh, me and Dave's first time coming out into the 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 front of the the podcast. It That's is. true. We're it we're is. usually in the studio, uh, keeping things focused, and and, uh, and without that, without that, it's an unwieldy mess. All right. Well, we will see you guys next time. Thanks for joining us for this, and sorry about the little hiatus. We have Dave had a really busy month uh, saving the world, and I was petting my puppies. So and breaking a finger <laughs> and breaking a finger. You can't. You just can't stay out of trouble. Can't take yeah. you anywhere. No. But he was he he strained it, giving he the SAT and all of them about that finger. Could have been like I was, uh, you know, uh, fixing a satellite in space and you know, the French <laughs> zero gravity. You know, no, skiing, a fist no, fight, a badass. I was in the bathroom. I was in the tree skiing, man. You know, and anything can happen back there. Right. You really should I'm not be moving at high there. speeds. <laughs> or breaking contact with Earth. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're glad that wasn't worse, Dave. I'm glad it was just a totally just all a good. fingy. Could yeah. have been all worse. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that heals fast for you. So, to our subscribers, our old viewers and new viewers alike, we love you. We appreciate you being here, and we will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and tell your friends. And join us on the platform. Most important part. Thanks. The terminal.urban.finance, and we will see you there. Peace, guys.